The past has no power over the present moment. Some changes look negative on the surface but you will soon realize that space is being created in your life for something new to emerge. The primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation but your thoughts about it. Acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation for all abundance. Life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. How do you know this is the experience you need? Because this is the experience you are having at the moment. Give up defining yourself to yourself or to others. You won't die. You will come to life. And don't be concerned with how others define you. When they define you, they are limiting themselves, so it's their problem. Whenever you interact with people, don't be there primarily as a function or a role, but as the field of conscious presence. You can only lose something that you have, but you cannot lose something that you are. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. Sometimes letting things go is an act of far greater power than defending or hanging on. To love is to recognize yourself in another. Time isn't precious at all, because it is an illusion. What you perceive as precious is not time but the one point that is out of time, the now. That is precious indeed. The more you are focused on time, past and future, the more you miss the now, the most precious thing there is. Life isn't as serious as the mind makes it out to be. I have lived with several Zen masters all of them cats. Life is the dancer and you are the dance. Anything that you resent and strongly react to in another is also in you. Whatever the present moment contains, accept it as if you had chosen it. You can only lose something that you have, but you cannot lose something that you are. Love is not selective, just as the light of the sun is not selective. It does not make one person special. It is not exclusive. Exclusivity is not the love of God but the love of ego. However, the intensity with which true love is felt can vary. There may be one person who reflects your love back to you more clearly and more intensely than others, and if that person feels the same toward you, it can be said that you are in a love relationship with him or her. The bond that connects you with that person is the same bond that connects you with the person sitting next to you on a bus, or with a bird, a tree, a flower. Only the degree of intensity with which it is felt differs. You find peace not by rearranging the circumstances of your life, but by realizing who you are at the deepest level. Whatever you fight, you strengthen, and what you resist, persists. Death is a stripping away of all that is not you. The secret of life is to die before you die and find that there is no death. The primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation but thought about it. Be aware of the thoughts you are thinking. Separate them from the situation, which is always neutral. It is as it is. All negativity is caused by an accumulation of psychological time and denial of the present. Unease, anxiety, tension, stress, worry, all forms of fear are caused by too much future, and not enough presence. Guilt, regret, resentment. Grievances, sadness, bitterness, and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. A genuine relationship is one that is not dominated by the ego with its image-making and self-seeking. In a genuine relationship, there is an outward flow of open, alert attention toward the other person in which there is no wanting whatsoever. Worry pretends to be necessary but serves no useful purpose, it is not uncommon for people to spend their whole life waiting to start living. Love is not selective, just as the light of the sun is not selective. It does not make one person special. 
it is not exclusive. Exclusivity is not the love of God but the love of ego. However, the intensity with which true love is felt can vary. There may be one person who reflects your love back to you more clearly and more intensely than others, and if that person feels the same toward you, it can be said that you are in a love relationship with him or her. The bond that connects you with that person is the same bond that connects you with the person sitting next to you on a bus, or with a bird, a tree, a flower. Only the degree of intensity with which it is felt differs. You find peace not by rearranging the circumstances of your life, but by realizing who you are at the deepest level. Whatever you fight, you strengthen, and what you resist, persists. Death is a stripping away of all that is not you. The secret of life is to die before you die and find that there is no death. The primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation but thought about it. Be aware of the thoughts you are thinking. Separate them from the situation, which is always neutral. It is as it is. All negativity is caused by an accumulation of psychological time and denial of the present. Unease, anxiety, tension, stress, worry, all forms of fear are caused by too much future, and not enough presence. Guilt, regret, resentment. Grievances, sadness, bitterness, and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. A genuine relationship is one that is not dominated by the ego with its image-making and self-seeking. In a genuine relationship, there is an outward flow of open, alert attention toward the other person in which there is no wanting whatsoever. Worry pretends to be necessary but serves no useful purpose, it is not uncommon for people to spend their whole life waiting to start living. What a liberation to realize that the voice in my head is not who I am. Who am I then? The one who sees that. Living up to an image that you have of yourself or that other people have of you is inauthentic living. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you will ever have. Don't let a mad world tell you that success is anything other than a successful present moment. All problems are illusions of the mind. Awareness is the greatest agent for change. As soon as you honor the present moment, all unhappiness and struggle dissolve, and life begins to flow with joy and ease. When you act out the present moment awareness, whatever you do becomes imbued with a sense of quality. Care and love even the most simple action. Don't seek happiness. If you seek it, you won't find it, because seeking is the antithesis of happiness, can you look without the voice in your head commenting, drawing conclusions, comparing, or trying to figure something out? To offer no resistance to life is to be in a state of grace, ease, and lightness. This state is then no longer dependent upon things being in a certain way, good or bad. It seems almost paradoxical, Yet when your inner dependency on form is gone, the general conditions of your life, the outer forms, tend to improve greatly. Things, people, or conditions that you thought you needed for your happiness now come to you with no struggle or effort on your part. And you are free to enjoy and appreciate them while they last. All those things, of course, will still pass away, cycles will come and go but with dependency gone there is no fear of loss anymore. Life flows with ease. If your mind carries a heavy burden of past, you will experience more of the same. The past perpetuates itself through lack of presence. The quality of your consciousness at this moment is what shapes the future. All the things that truly matter, beauty, love, creativity, Joy and inner peace arise from beyond the mind. When you don't cover up the world with words and labels, a sense of the miraculous returns to your life that was lost a long time ago when humanity, instead of using thought, 
became possessed by thought. The moment you become aware of the ego in you, it is strictly speaking no longer the ego, but just an old, conditioned mind pattern. Ego implies unawareness. Awareness and ego cannot coexist. Don't look for peace. Don't look for any other state than the one you are in now, otherwise, you will set up inner conflict and unconscious resistance. Forgive yourself for not being at peace. The moment you completely accept your non-peace, your non-peace becomes transmuted into peace. Anything you accept fully will get you there, will take you into peace. This is the miracle of surrender, this is my secret, he said. I don't mind what happens, life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness, being must be felt. It can't be thought, to recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity, the beginning of healing and transcendence, whenever you become anxious or stressed, outer purpose has taken over, and you lost sight of your inner purpose. You have forgotten that your state of consciousness is primary, all else secondary, the most common ego identifications have to do with possessions. The work you do, social status and recognition, knowledge and education, physical appearance, special abilities, relationships, person and family history, belief systems, and often nationalistic, racial, religious, and other collective identifications. None of these is you. Only the truth of who you are, if realized, will set you free. The moment that judgment stops through acceptance of what it is, you are free of the mind. You have made room for love, for joy, for peace. If not now, when? What a caterpillar calls the end of the world we call a butterfly. Nothing has happened in the past. Nothing has happened in the past, it happened in the now. Nothing will ever happen in the future, it will happen in the now. You are not I in the universe, you are the universe, an intrinsic part of it. Ultimately you are not a person, but a focal point where the universe is becoming conscious of itself. What an amazing miracle. In today's rush we all think too much, seek too much, want too much and forget about the joy of just being. Humanity is now faced with a stark choice, evolve or die. If the structures of the human mind remain unchanged, we will always end up recreating the same world, the same evils, the same dysfunction. Watch any plant or animal and let it teach you acceptance of what is. Surrender to the now. Let it teach you being. Let it teach you integrity, which means to be one, to be yourself, to be real. Let it teach you how to live and how to die, and how not to make living and dying into a problem. The beginning of freedom is the realization that you are not the thinker. The moment you start watching the thinker, a higher level of consciousness becomes activated. You then begin to realize that there is a vast realm of intelligence beyond thought, that thought is only a tiny aspect of that intelligence. You also realize that all the things that truly matter, beauty, love, creativity, joy, inner peace, arise from beyond the mind. You begin to awaken. Where there is anger there is always pain underneath. What you react to in others, you strengthen in yourself. Words reduce reality to something the human mind can grasp, which isn't very much. Man has made God in his own image, your outer journey may contain a million steps, your inner journey only has one, the step you are taking right now. Reading is my passion and my escape since I was five years old. Overall, children don't realize the magic that can live inside their own heads. Better even than any movie. Once you have identified with some form of negativity, you do not want to let it go, and on a deeply unconscious level, you do not want positive change. 
It would threaten your identity as a depressed, angry or hard done by person. You will then ignore, deny or sabotage the positive in your life. This is a common phenomenon. It is also insane. Love is a state of being. Your love is not outside, it is deep within you. You can never lose it, and it cannot leave you. A woman in her thirties came to see me. As she greeted me, I could sense the pain behind her polite and superficial smile. She started telling me her story, and within one second her smile changed into a grimace of pain. Then, she began to sob uncontrollably. She said she felt lonely and unfulfilled, there was much anger and sadness. As a child she had been abused by a physically violent father. I saw quickly that her pain was not caused by her present life circumstances but by an extraordinarily heavy pain body. Her pain body had become the filter through which she viewed her life situation, she was not yet able to see the link between the emotional pain and her thoughts, being completely identified with both. She could not yet see that she was feeding the pain body with her thoughts. In other words, she lived with the burden of a deeply unhappy self. At some level, however, she must have realized that her pain originated within herself. That she was a burden to herself. She was ready to awaken, and this is why she had come. I directed the focus of her attention to what she was feeling inside her body and asked her to sense the emotion directly, instead of through the filter of her unhappy thoughts, her unhappy story. She said she had come expecting me to show her the way out of her unhappiness, not into it. Reluctantly, however, she did what I asked her to do. Tears were rolling down her face, her whole body was shaking. At this moment, this is what you feel. I said. There is nothing you can do about the fact that at this moment this is what you feel. Now, instead of wanting this moment to be different from the way it is, which adds more pain to the pain that is already there, is it possible for you to completely accept that this is what you feel right now? She was quiet for a moment. Suddenly she looked impatient, as if she was about to get up, and said angrily, No, I don't want to accept this. Who is speaking? I asked her. You are the unhappiness in you. Can you see that your unhappiness about being unhappy is just another layer of unhappiness? She became quiet again. I am not asking you to do anything. All I'm asking is that you find out whether it is possible for you to allow those feelings to be there. In other words, and this may sound strange, if you don't mind being unhappy, what happens to the unhappiness? Don't you want to find out? She looked puzzled briefly, and after a minute or so of sitting silently, I suddenly noticed a significant shift in her energy field. She said, this is weird. I'm still unhappy, but now there is space around it. It seems to matter less. This was the first time I heard somebody put it like that, there is space around my unhappiness. That space, of course, comes when there is inner acceptance of whatever you are experiencing in the present moment. I didn't say much else, allowing her to be with the experience. Later she came to understand that the moment she stopped identifying with the feeling, the old painful emotion that lived in her, the moment she put her attention on it directly without trying to resist it, it could no longer control her thinking and so become mixed up with a mentally constructed story called the unhappy me. Another dimension had come into her life that transcended her personal past, the dimension of presence. Since you cannot be unhappy without an unhappy story, this was the end of her unhappiness. It was also the beginning of the end of her pain body. Emotion in itself is not unhappiness. Only emotion plus an unhappy story is unhappiness. When our session came to an end, 
it was fulfilling to know that I had just witnessed the arising of presence in another human being. The very reason for our existence in human form is to bring that dimension of consciousness into this world. I had also witnessed a diminishment of the pain body, not through fighting it but through bringing the light of consciousness to it. The significance is hiding in the insignificant. Appreciate everything. Every complaint is a little story the mind makes up that you completely believe in. Become conscious of being conscious. Wherever you are, be there totally. If you find your here and now intolerable and it makes you unhappy, you have three options, remove yourself from the situation, change it, or accept it totally. If you want to take responsibility for your life, you must choose one of those three options, and you must choose now. Then accept the consequences, I'm grateful for always this moment, the now, no matter what form it takes, being at ease with not knowing is crucial for answers to come to you. Discontent, blaming, complaining, self-pity cannot serve as a foundation for a good future, no matter how much effort you make, love is a state of being. Your love is not outside, it is deep within you. You can never lose it, and it cannot leave you. It is not dependent on some other body, some external form, the mind is a superb instrument if used rightly. Used wrongly, however, it becomes very destructive. To put it more accurately, you usually don't use it at all. It uses you, Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is within you.